Hey guys, I just wanted to throw another um, Coulomb's Law example here at you. This one's a little bit different as you can see because we don't have two charged objects, now we have three, but it's still a, this is still a 1D example. Um, or I sometimes call these, here's a fun word to spell, collinear, I think it has one L, um, meaning that co, they're together on linear a line. So they form one nice straight line. Uh, we'll look at some 2D ones a little bit later on. So in this question, we're asked to find the force on the second charge, which is this negative guy here in the middle. We have the separation of all the charges, and we also have the magnitude of the charges, either positive or negative, in microcoulombs again. First thing we're going to do here, just figure out the magnitude of the forces. Then we're going to worry about the direction of the forces in a minute. So I'm going to call this first one here the force of object 1 on object 2. Okay, so force of 1 dash 2. So to calculate that, here comes Coulomb's law. The electric force is K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. For K, we're putting in Coulomb's constant, 8.99 times 10 to the 9. Put those units in, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. And then we're times get by the charges. So we have 2 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And for the negative charge, 3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. You notice I don't put the negative sign in for the negative charge. Because like we said the other day, this is going to give us an absolute value of the electric force. So there's actually no need to put the negative sign in. If you do, you're going to end up getting a negative force. And that's going to throw you off because this force may or, not be not, may or may not be negative. So we're going to decide that in a minute. We're not going to decide it from the equation, but from the, the picture and the nature of the charges. I also converted from centimeters to meters. That's going to be important as well. Okay, so I'm going to find the first force. I'll grab the old calculator here. This is always interesting. So 8.99. You also notice I'm not using times 10 to the power of. I like to use the E button. Uh, it's just a lot slicker, I find. And you're less likely to make a mistake with brackets if you're using the E button. So I like to do that. Oops, I forgot a negative sign. There we go. And I can divide this by 0.4 squared. And don't forget to square. Boy, that's probably one of the most common mistakes with Coulomb's Law. So for our force, we're getting 0 0.3371 uh, newtons. Okay, so this is the one that I'm calling force of 1 on 2. Now, if you don't mind, just to save us all a little bit of time, let's talk about the force of, of th uh, 3 on 2. And I'm just going to figure that one out on my calculator. I won't actually write it out. Uh, if this was you doing it on a test, on a test, you would write this out yourself. But you know, we can just push second enter, and the only things I need to go in here and change are, it's not uh, two microcoulombs, now it's five, and the separation isn't 0.4, it's 1.2 meters squared. Okay, so that's going to give us 0 0.0936, 0 0.0936 newtons. Okay, step one, we just find the two forces. Now the second step is probably the one kids have the most trouble with, is, is actually figuring out which direction are the force is going to act in. So let's take a look at this first force. I have a n positive charge here on the left, and I have a negative charge in the middle. I want to know what the charge, or what the force on the second charge is. For right now, just ignore the third charge altogether. Think about these two. What's the direction of the force between them? Well, if I was to just hold this positive charge still, the negative charge would move towards it. It would be attracted to it. So this force of 1 on 2 right here is going to be acting to the left because the positive charge will attract the negative charge, make it move to the left. And our usual convention is anytime you have a force going to the left, we're going to call it negative. So I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure I have that force as a negative value. Now let's take a look at the other one. Well, same sort of situation here. Now if I'm looking at the force of 3 on 2, I completely ignore the first ball. That one doesn't matter right now. And it's going to be an attraction force. So if I hold this one still and uh, charge 2 moves, it's going to move to the right, 
So that's my direction of force of 3 on 2. It's a positive. I know sometimes kids say, oh, well, you know, if, if, if the uh, negative charge here is moving towards <coughs> the positive charge here, then this distance will change. Well, we don't worry about that. This is all happening at the same time before any of the distances have a chance to change. We're just ignoring one of them at, and only dealing with two of the three at any one given time. To finish off, if we want the total force or the net force, we just have to add those two together. And now that I've already called one of them negative and I've dealt with the vector nature of the forces, this is a pretty easy step. It's just adding them together. So this is essentially what we're going to do in these nice collinear 1D problems where you have maybe two point charges. So hopefully this was helpful. And if you have any more questions about 2D problems, you can feel free to shoot me an email. Or you can uh, take a look at the website. I do have some notes um, on 1D and 2D problems on ldindustries.ca. And you can kind of check them out to see how we could do this example and a few more uh, complicated ones as well. So our final force is going to be 0 0.2435 for sig digs. I just want 0 0.24 newtons. And it's going to act to the left. Have a good day. We'll talk to you guys later.